Hi and welcome to this tutorial to build your painting skills. In this session, we will practice painting reflective surfaces such as this metallic cup. Reflective surfaces can be demanding, but also rewarding on an artistic level. If you look at this example, the demanding part is that you also need to paint the other objects that are reflected. A lot of observational skills are required. For ours, we will keep it a bit simpler by just representing two objects. This task should take you about 45 minutes to complete. We will work about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters square. I will measure this out in my sketchbook. On our palette, we will need white, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and black. No, we do not need large amounts as the painting is small. I also have a cup of water to rinse my brush in a rag, but a paper towel is also fine. First, we'll lightly draft out the image we will paint. I'll use a small brush for this. I'm going to take some white and ochre to mix and dilute it with water. Create a horizontal line about a third down from the top of the page. Mark a vertical line down the middle. I put these little ticks to mark out the height of the cup. I also do this for the width. The cup is symmetrical, so this helps. Mark out the ellipse of the top. and then the curve at the bottom. Note that the cup will taper as it goes down. Mark out the diagonals of the sides. Create the circle for the cherry. And mark out a diagonal line for the casted shadow of the cup. Take a generous amount of white and mix it with a touch of black to create a very pale grey. Feel free to test it out on the blank area of your page. Start by painting the right side. and then the left. The center line of the cup will represent a highlight. Paint the shadow and the tabletop surface as I do. Next take your red with a touch of white. I'm also going to add a little yellow just for interest. Paint the cherry. And add a little red to the cup to represent the reflection. We will next create a very dark grey for the background. Fill this section in, as well as the casted shadows and a dark line under the cup. I've just noticed I forgot to paint a section of the table grey, so I'll assume you have too. Apologies. I'm going to adjust the line of the casted shadow here as I feel it is too narrow.
I'll now create a pink to add it to the cherry. This will serve as a slight highlighted area. I'll then take a small amount of white to create the reflected highlight of the cherry. I'll now work on the cup with various shades of grey ranging from medium to light. I keep my brushwork almost sketchy. Don't apply the paint in a very heavy manner. Another way to develop this is to prepare four grey tones on your palette beforehand, but we'll live mix this for practice. This may take you some time, but you will notice the cup is starting to be formed due to the use of varied grey tones. When I apply the greys, you will notice I make sweeping vertical movements to help develop the contour of the object but to also assist with the blending. Take some of the white to add the lightest highlight areas. I'm also going to add a little dark grey shadow for the cherry against the cup. We'll now finish painting the table with a medium grey. Add the dark grey as a shadow under the cherry. I'll create some brown for the cherry stem. I'll take some white to touch up the highlights. To conclude, I'll take the red and dilute it to glaze over the cherry. Glazing simply means a watery coat of paint. I'll also reapply the highlight. If we reflect on our painting, what might we do better next time? I think my lower casted shadow lines could be improved as there is a little gap. The ellipse at the top of the cup is okay, but if I wanted a more realistic approach, I should be more accurate. Lastly, I'm not fully satisfied with the red of the cherry. It's a little dull. I hope this has helped you develop some color mixing skills for an artwork. Be sure to check out some of the other videos to continue building your skills. Painting takes time and practice, don't give up. Lastly, just a shout out to Mark Daniel Nelson as this activity was adapted from his book.